A man came to see me today, said someone was coming for us. I asked him who we were so afraid of, he repeated one name. Totenkopf. A. B. N. It's headphones, Steel! Back with another film review, and in this case, it's going to be the 2004 film Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. So I re it recently popped into my head as a film to watch just because I don't know. I was just thinking about old films that I kind of never really remembered or didn't finish or don't know why I have or had such a positive memory of it. And this uh, this movie came into my mind, so I remember seeing the trailers for it. I thought that looks like a pretty interesting film to watch. Didn't catch it in the theater, but um, at some point I know I did watch it and rent, or I rented it and watched it. But thinking about it now, or thinking back on it now, I don't remember much of the film outside of kind of the cast and one casting error. So I thought a particular actor was in it, but I guess he was not. So with that, let's jump right into it. So. To start off the bat, I do remember as far as the cast goes, as far as Gwyneth Paltrow and um, Angelina Jolie, and my memory of the of um, was minimal as far as Gwyneth Paltrow. I just remember she was in it for some reason, and then Angelina Jolie was the villain. But as it turns out, she's not. She's the friend to the protagonist of the film. And my biggest time lapse in memory of the film is that I thought for some reason that Sky Captain was played by Ewan McGregor but is actually played by Jude Law so in watching the movie um, I think the reason I thought that is that Sky Captain is a very Obi-Wan style character so uh, when you hear him without looking at him he sounds a lot like Obi-Wan and then as far as his look is a lot like um, Han Solo as far as a smuggler a scoundrel type but then has a personality of Anakin Skywalker so it feels like not to say that the movie um, was kind of trying to mimic those characters from the prequels but I don't know, it just felt like his character was a very Star Wars-ish character and maybe my the memory of him sounding like Obi-Wan stuck more than I thought. So I thought that Ewan McGregor was in the film when he wasn't. And then we have, for example, other Star Wars-ish elements like the chase through um, New York, the big chase scene um, as Sky Captain and Gwyneth Paltrow were trying to um, escape and chase the bad guy bird plane things. Um, it was very reminiscent of the speeder chase through Coruscant in um, episode 2 Attack of the Clones. So just a weird coincidence there once I could not get um, Sky Captain as Ewan McGregor out of my mind. Um, and then a bit of random historical um, oddities. So I recently watched um, Titans of Amer or the Titans of America on um, which was on, which recently aired on the History Channel, and they were talking about how when the Empire State Building was made, and um, as far as making it a bigger building than the Chrysler Building, they added a spire at the top of the building, and as a pro promotional thing that was an outright outright lie is that they were going to use. Um, that spire as a docking station for um, Hindenburg style blimps and um, essentially people could take the blimp and then take, get off at the Empire State Building but as it turns out it's not feasible due to the high winds and difficulty in holding the blimp in place which the movie kind of felt like I don't know if it was on purpose or just as a bit of cool sci-fi-ness but um, they actually implemented that in the film as far as the blimp docking at the Empire State Building and then you have a guy holding a rope to keep the blimp in place so people can get off of it which seeing it in action does show how ridiculous it is because of the amount of energy and effort and strength a person would need to hold the blimp in place compared to those um, size of a human person doing the holding. So to me it felt like it would have been something that would have been better where it's held in place by uh, magnetism where like the ropes are held in, are maybe clamped in place with a magnet or tied in place along the lines of a boat or something but 
um, it feels like it's one of those things that could have been better held in, held in place by multiple ropes rather than just one person because it feels like there would have be there would be a lot of drift going on um and so that's really the biggest of the oddities um so going through the rest of the film there's a lot less blue that i remembered so for some reason i thought that the entire film had a blue tint to it but i guess it has a um I guess it has a more um, sepia tint to it, more like a yellowish red rustic look. So um, I just so I don't know. I just thought I had a more blue look, but um, like I said, it's, a lot of it feels like it's like my memory is um, not quite what like I, I'm remembering. I guess bits and pieces or selective parts from it, but not quite what happened in the film. So it kind of it kind of feels good to be good to have to rewatch the movie. Um, and then when we get to the mobile airstrip when the Sky Captain and Gwyneth and Paltrow are trying to track down the world of tomorrow and they land on the um, airstrip that's run by Angelina Jolie, it feels re very reminiscent of a steampunk style version of the helicarrier from the Avengers that's run by um, S.H.I.E.L.D. So I thought that was actually a very good look and very well done and then towards the end of the film when we have the, the victory look with all those different airships and then the planes flying from right to left was a good look so in general i think that was one of the things that was well better well done um the planes that the enemy used or the bad guys used that were flying like planes or flying like birds was kind of weird and it kind of took me out of it to have that much that they have that much mechanism to be able to do that but then um overall it doesn't feel like they spent enough time as far as the bad guys go and their technology so that face that's the face of um totem comp being generated by electricity and the what looks like a tesla coil i guess was pretty cool but then they don't really explain too much and by that time they were at the end of the film so it feels like they could have spent maybe another half an hour or so maybe even 15 minutes or whatever to um explain some of that technology or spend time more time on the bad guys base as far as operations go um kind of along the lines of gi joe uh which um kind of at the end of the film that's kind of the vibe i was getting so it feels like um those new gi joe films uh kind of drew their inspiration from um sky captain and the world of tomorrow i guess but um I kind of wanted to spend more time with the bad guys and their technology or more time on their base to see kind of the background of how their technology works so it feels less jarring and especially with the final spaceship that they're using as the spaceship version of the Ark that looked kind of like a Naboo space cruiser um, which was kind of cool and futuristic looking and kind of works with the whole motif of the world of tomorrow but it all goes back to not having enough background on the bad guys and their technology to um, have that kind of baseline for what their technology is based on or what's going on or um, have that interspersed with the scientists as far as like filler information to kind of bring us up to speed with what's going on in Totem Comp's world with his technology and wanting to uh, leave the planet. So that's kind of all there is for this particular review. If, so if I was to give the film a grade, I'd probably give it a grade of um, probably about 85%. Overall, I thought it was pretty good. It was a good, fun time. Um, compared to Rotten Tomatoes, it looks like the critics gave it about a 70% and the audience score is 46%. So as far as it goes for me, um, overall it was a good movie, but it was lacking on the evil side. It had... The, a good uh, retro look and feel um, for you know a movie from the maybe the 20s and 30s you know think along the lines of my last review with the Rocketeer where um, overall it was it had that very nice look and feel of the 20s and 30s and 40s trying to project what the future was going to look like um, but it doesn't really explain or doesn't spend enough time um, explaining the bad guys and why we should care or fear the world of tomorrow so they it feels like they introduced the scientists and the guys who escaped but 
they didn't really hash out that part of the story so if by the time you finish the film it feels like something is missing um especially with things like um the background with um Sky Captain and Frankie, the the character played by Angelina Jolie. So even if they had their mission in the beginning, like a prelude to kind of to show what these scientists were doing with Totenkopf back in the day, and they couldn't find out because Gwyneth Paltrow's character sabotaged Sky Captain's plane, so they had to evacuate or something like that. Um, and we kind of, we have an overview of their lab with the technology and things like that, then that kind of would have filled it out a little bit better. Maybe add, you know, five to 15 minutes to the film, but at least it hashes out that story and makes it conclude a little bit better by the time we get to the end of the film. So like I said, I give it a grade of about a B, right around 85%. Overall good for what they portrayed, but it just feels like there was story missing. So. It's hard to really give it a higher grade and say that it's a good movie just because because when you feel like a story's missing, there's usually a good uh, reason for it. So that's all there is for this particular uh, review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesnail.reviews for our past episodes, subscription, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, you can support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01, where you can get bonus co content, access to upcoming content, um, give recommendations for stuff to watch and review, and all of that good stuff. So um, you also get an update on my playthrough of Knights of the Old Republic 2 and what's going on with that and some other stuff that is coming up for the month of June as well. So um, that's all there is for that. So thanks for tuning into this particular episode. And until